today we would be talking about uh, improvement of bearing capacity uh, in uh, soft soils using geosyntics. In the previous class we just uh, uh, understood uh, how the bearing capacity of uh, sands could be improved uh, using uh, Binkwith and D method and then uh, we also saw that uh, the bearing capacity improvement is possible because uh, the thing is that we try to calculate how much is the tension force required because of the friction between the soil and reinforcement that is what we do, do there and uh, we also saw that the length of the uh, reinforcement can be uh, curtailed if you use anchorage concept you know the thing is the concept of anchorage in which uh, there is a uh, apart from frictional resistance there is a bearing resistance that get mobilized. So, that uh, frictional resistance plus bearing resistance can be very useful in uh, uh, the improvement of bearings, uh, bearing resistance. So, we will see how it can be done in soft soils because we know that uh, soft soils are uh, naturally poor like uh, the bearing capacities could be very low uh, particularly when you know you go to coastal areas the soft soils are of uh, you know quite you, you see them quite often and you know you need to construct some uh, structures uh, buildings and all that. And uh, I just gave some brief introduction earlier to this method on how it can improve the bearing capacity. In fact, we know that the bearing capacity of the soft soil is given by uh, C and C like we call it uh, C and we have this uh, term U it is called undrained cohesion okay. and then N C is a cohesion factor in bearing capacity equation. In fact, in bearing capacity equation we have three terms N C, N Q, N gamma which are nothing but the bearing capacity factors. And uh, actually when we have this uh, uh, you know what we do is that when you are having soft soils uh, what we do is that uh, the best method is to put on the soft soil some sort of sand uh, you know so that it improves bearing capacity. And if you are putting sand you can always uh, as well put reinforcement inside the sand. So, we have uh, if you do that there are some three mechanisms that we uh, have so that we can design the reinforced uh, uh, foundation considering these effects. One is called shear layer effect the other one is con confinement effect due to interaction between the sand and reinforcement in sand layer and additional surcharge effects. Uh, this is what I meant like you have a granular soil here as is just this is a clay bed clay bed and uh, when you have a foundation here what we do is that you in this uh, uh, the tendency for this material is to go like this, but then if there will be a passive resistance in the sand okay, that is given by uh, K p gamma h instead of K a gamma h we know that is active pressure, but here it is a resistance is being given by the soil. So, we call it passive resistance we say K p gamma s h. Okay. So, then you have this is called you know we call it shear layer effect. What we did was that you we have introduced a shear layer of about h, thick, h thickness and uh, it helps in bearing capacity improvement. So, whatever is that like you know the, the load is not directly now coming onto the clay it is coming onto the soft soil. In the same uh, material if you put a reinforcement here see you have a reinforcement here in fact. Uh, you can calculate the total reinforcement force and you can even divide that and any, anything can be done and um, the advantage you know if you put a reinforcement at the bottom. Um, so, what we are trying to do is that uh, we try to provide a confinement effect in the sense that when there is a load applied uh, vertically then there is some sort of resistance that get mobilized because of the friction between the soil and reinforcement. Because of the friction between the soil and reinforcement there is a tension force T r develops. Okay. Then you have one vertical component of the tensional force that acts in the direction in this direction which will resist the bearing capacity. So, you have bearing capacity improvement because of this factor like we call it uh, you know shear layer effect or t, uh, we say T f 1. Okay. Then there is another term T f 2 to f 2 you can say like shear resistance that gets mobilized at this plane you know we have taken this this is a plane and then this is the shear resistance that gets mobilized. And uh, now apart from these two so this is called confinement effect and it is actually the length of the reinforcement is L and uh, this is that effective length is L e. Okay. So, this is related to say for example, it can be 2.5 or 3 d and 3 
B or whatever. Okay. So, th this leads to some sort of confinement effect that is what it means and when you have you know uh, effects like this like both this both these effects are now acting what the there is they act as something like you know uh, as some surcharge effect actually you know because you know in this uh, reinforcement layer you know the, uh, the you have these two combinations you have what is called uh, the it is a surcharge effect we call it and uh, this decreases with uh, distance exponentially and uh, there are some theoretical formulations for this and we try to say that when she s s naught is q s naught is this much and then at a distance 1 percent of it there is the effective breadth to some extent uh, we can call it. Uh, of course, lot of work has been done on these lines in Japan particularly where you know soft they you have all islands there you know all are islands and uh, you have to construct some apartments there and uh, you have to see the soil is already there is be, there will be water actually you know it is not even soil you cannot call it it is highly liquid uh, soil. So, you need to really put some sort of sand put some sort of reinforcement and then start constructing allow it consolidate we have to do many operations there and finally, you know you want to get a very good bearing capacity then uh, there is lot of uh, effort required there I will we'll show you some of those results and um, so as I just mentioned when you have a granular bed of thickness h of bulk density gamma s and friction angle phi s with reinforcement is provided over soft soil the bearing capacity of the footing resting on this medium is increased that we know because it helps uh, that there is some resistance. Uh, frictional forces developed between the soil and reinforcement induce tensile strains in the reinforcement. The tensile strains developed provide the confining effect. This will introduce additional shear resistance along the vertical plane at the edge and exponentially decrease with distance away from the edge of the footing. So, even this uh, additional shear resistance that you get you know uh, there is another component that you have and uh, so all the three things put together like if you just say Q is the original bearing capacity plus delta Q R because of the reinforcement and surcharge effects and also that sand layer effects you can just say that these three deltas will add up to the uh, add and then increase the bearing capacity. So, how do you find out as I just mentioned uh, when you talk of shear layer effect the shearing resistance that are developed along the vertical plane at the edge of the footing is given by like as I just said uh, you know k p gamma h. So, k p gamma h square by 2 into tan phi s because we need the vertical component of it right. So, like uh, this is that and then the improvement due to shear layer effect is suppose you say delta q into s l it is nothing but it is there are two edges it is acting 2 f 1 2 tau it can be tau or whatever ok. So, by b. So, then I mean by, by you know this is the what per, per meter length we are calculating. So, what is actually the improvement is nothing but you know this divided by n c c u ok this will be the bearing capacity uh, ratio ok how much is the building capacity ratio. What we are trying to say is that it is uh, it, it should be more than say 1 to 1.5 something like that what is that number we are trying to get here that we will see ok. Now, as I said it is a confinement effect the tensile force are generated in the reinforcement as a result of friction and L d is the effective length phi r is the friction angle between the reinforcement and soil like you know it can be 2 thirds phi or like suppose you are using a geo grid or you know very good material like you know if you have normally we take as uh, 2 thirds phi but if you have bearing resistance also added up it can be even very high you know it actually it varies from 0 0.6 to 0 point uh, and actually 1 it is a very good one one means it is a very good rough material you know the thing is that uh, there is a no uh, you know uh, the uh, it is a frictional resistance is very high ok. Like in the case of soft materials the frictional resistance could be much lower like it can be 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 or something. So, delta 2 thirds of tan uh, phi is something 0 0.66 and in the case of geo grids it can be 0 0.8 and in some places it can be 0 0.5 and 0 0.67 ok. So, it could be higher also. So, what I want to say is that this term I already mentioned about the linear density ratio earlier like you know you are trying to put the reinforcement across this uh, material. So, you have some sort of spacing and length and all that. So, if it is a geo textile like a, a sheet you call L d r is equal to 1 and uh, for some metallics uh, grids or geo grids it can be little less also and uh, 
there are two terms now frictional resistance is something the friction angle between the reinforcement and granular field and LDR and also the um, effective length the, all these things are important and uh, based on this we should calculate the tensile force. How do you calculate the tensile force? It is like this the reinforcement force is nothing but gamma s into h is the overburden acting into tan phi r into L, LD, LDR you know linear density this is a term that we use it is nothing but there is a weight of that material is acting and uh, into it is um, uh, friction angle of the uh, uh, friction angle between the soil and the reinforcement into LE what is the length it is over which it is acting and all that and normally it can be 2.5 to it can be even 3b 4b and all that. So, the T f 2 developed at the edge of the footing due to the effect of the reinforcement leading to confinement is T f 2 is T r tan phi s ok. So, yeah you can get again that uh, term. So, essentially once you get that uh, T r and uh, ok. So, essentially what you are doing is that I will just I think uh, yeah in the next slide it is there. this one like this is what you are trying to find out you know the T r and then uh, multiply by the tan phi s you get uh, this vertical component that is what we did here T f 2 is T r tan phi s once you know that and then once uh, we know so we know the improvement in uh, bearing capacity due to confining effect ok this is what you are getting here ok. So, the there is a simple expression actually in uh, given in uh, one of the good papers uh, like all these two both these two effects shear layer effect and exponential effect uh, will add up in this form and then you know you actually you know you need to integrate you know actually there is a distribution function for this and all that and once you integrate and you want to get the number here you know actually what you are trying to get what is the value here is what you are trying to find out it is uh, uh, there is a simple expression that we have, but it can be obtained with some um, uh, simple calculations which are given in the literature. And you can uh, take it for the time being that it is point if you take the, it as exponential distribution, it is 0.84 times into whatever you have computed previously. Okay, so based on these three things, you are able to get all the three effects. So let us see it in the case of a problem that we saw earlier. Design a continuous foundation of uh, B equal to 1 meter that will carry a load of 480 tons that needs to be constructed on the soft soil and the under strength of the soil is 10 kPa ok. So, you can see that it is 480 tons uh, 480 kilonewton tons is the load and we know now the bearing capacity is only 51 kPa it is 5.1 foot in, into Cu uh, like 10 kPa. So, this is a very low value. Now, you would like to improve it and uh, say let us ta take 2 meters as a thickness of the uh, uh, sand that uh, sand cushion you are going to have and unit weight is 18 kilo per meter cube and that acts as a shear layer you know what the shear layer is that it absorbs all the shear strains ok. Now, you have this term kp gamma s square by 2 actually ok it should be 1 plus sin phi by 1 minus sin phi ok. This is a it should be reverse and it is you will get some number ok. So, you, you will calculate that it should be 1 plus sin phi by 1 minus k p is 1 plus sin phi by 1 minus sin phi into gamma p into 18 to square and tan 30 and all that we have ok. It is 1 plus that you should we know that. So, you will you have a number which is something ok you got an effect of shear layer effect which is uh, reasonably good like you know what I meant was that you have a, a 62.35 kilonewtons Newtons and uh, you are trying to take in both sides and so it is 124 and uh, it is actually if you see the bearing capacity ratio it is actually orig original one was 51 kPa and it is now you got a higher value. Now, let us take the case of reinforcement effect uh, consider that a geotextile layer is laid at the interface of the clay and sand the tensile forces are generated in the reinforcement is a result of uh, as a result of uh, friction between the granular soil and the reinforcement. So, we take it as L r is uh, the effective length and phi r is the frictional angle that we have seen and uh, we use the various terms like gamma s into h into tan phi r into L e. So, I am trying to use this terms uh, like 18, 18 tons 18 ton per meter cube 2 or whatever 18 kilometer per meter cube actually ok 18 kilometer per meter cube and 2 
and tan 30 and 3 meters is the length of that LD and LDR is 1 and you get some number. So, you again see that and uh, uh, bearing capacity due to confinement effect is there 124.70 you know, it is quite good. What I want to also draw to your attention is that now you have a 62 kilo, 62 or 60 kilo meter per meter is the length of the strength of the reinforcement actually. See you can even put any material like you know as I said um, uh, what I did here is linear density ratio is 1 I have take uh, something 1 I have taken but you can even put a wire mesh you know steel uh, wire mesh and uh, with sand and all that if you know how to calculate this uh, material it, it is all right like you know you can even calculate per meter length say for example if you are putting a wire mesh you can calculate the area of cross section of the steel available like you know say for example if it is just at 3 mm wire at uh, all that. So, in 1 meter length what is the diameter of that uh, you can calculate and you know the tensile capacity of the steel and you can calculate this number also. So, you will be able to even check whether uh, the this is actually the, this is a load that the tensile force generated because of the load right. So, you can even check you know based on the what you have provided what is the tensile resistance available one can even get a factor of safety here ok. So, we can even uh, 2 meters we have kept actually 2 meters is one thing that we have kept uh, ok one can make it 4 meters is it 3 meters is ok or 4 meters ok one can make a parameter study and if you want to make a very stiff uh, reinforcement here one can keep it here all that things could be done ok. Now, the contribution to such as effect also one can make as I just mentioned one can calculate all these things. So, all these things put together it is about 500 458 kilo per. So, what I wanted was how much 480 do you remember. So, um, if you remember the problem is 480 kilo per meter if you remember. So, we are able to get close to that number and one can alter some of these numbers like you know you can just go for a um, uh, say for example, higher thickness little higher thickness and all that and uh, see that it is 480 kilo meter per meter. The requirement if you remember it is about uh, 480 kilo meter meter. So, we are we are close to that right. So, definitely one can make some of the uh, uh, some of the adjustments and get these numbers say for example, they, they have number of uh, design variables here like here itself you can make something here like a uh, lot of things could be made here. Thickness of the sand layer first one is the thickness of the sand layer and the second one is the effect effect of reinforcement and uh, this another one. So, it is possible to use this technique uh, and improve the bearing capacity considering all the three effects that is what I would like to say. And uh, in fact, I would like to draw your attention to ground reclamation methods in Japan. In fact, uh, our country is big and uh, there is not I mean we have lot of soft soil problems, but uh, in particularly in Japan uh, no they have a lot of soft soils in fact uh, uh, there is one institute called institute of lowland technology I know there is a uh, saga you know they develop lot of uh, local techniques which are quite effective uh, uh, to construct in the case of soft soils. And uh, in fact, they also discuss on the uh, type of filling that you have to do and type of materials that you should do in the case of uh, you know soft soils. This is a typical example earth filling method you know you are trying to go for bearing capacity improvement it is nice. You can say for use soil reinforcement or surface soil stabilization we have seen many techniques techniques like using lime using cement and all that one can use like uh, these are the methods given here. And if you are using reinforcement do you want a geotextile you want a rope sheet you want a geonet you want a bamboo and you know anything is uh, possible. So, people have been using this and uh, ok this is about bearing capacity improvement and about filling how do you spread the fill like you know you got some sand. So, lightweight construction equipment small hydraulic fill pump soil spreading barge in fact, uh, so they are all required ok. Uh, so, they also have a similar design concept I would like to just highlight to you uh, say they do not have suppose, suppose they do not have sand where do you get sand. So, what you do is that you put a geomembrane some uh, reinforcement layer here and we assume that it acts like a tension membrane you know you apply a load and uh, the load resistance is like you know 
you any material can hold uh, uh, anything so you dump some material here like if I just say this like this is a sheet of paper and if I there is a building here and it is called there is a load applied and it deflects like this and uh, there is a tension component here and uh, the building will not further go that is because the vertical component of the tension force will nullify the vertical load coming. So, that is what is called uh, we call it tension membrane concept and the same logic we have here uh, some load applied say for example, there is an embankment that uh, you are trying to have and uh, you just have this sort of embankment and you assume that uh, there is a uh, tension membrane which acts like this and uh, the tension membrane or the tension force has some sort of circle here and there is an angle here theta and r ok and then the depth of the foundation is d of d f ok. So, just remember that and uh, we will just see how it helps. Now, in the case of so they have a simple approach similar to this like the ultimate bearing capacity of the foundation is assumed to comprise of the four following components one is the bearing capacity due to shear strength of the soil we know that it is q 1 is c and c ok. Bearing capacity developed by the tensile forces uh, generated both the ends of your textile reinforcement it is q 2 which is nothing but because of the tension. The third one is the restraining effect of the geotextile on the ground deformation. Actually, there is another one that uh, they have considered uh, it is called uh, Q3 where the deformation apart from uh, improvement in bearing capacity the deformation is also prevented and uh, restraining effect is there and then the surcharge effect due to settlement and heave there is another one. So, uh, they are all you know simple expressions are uh, being used for that it is q 1 is c and c I, I told you and q 2 is nothing but tension is mobilized 2 t sin theta by b, b is a, uh, foot, uh, the uh, size of the footing and per meter length q 3 is nothing but t into n q by r ok gamma sorry in n q by this thing um, to the, uh, r actually and I will show you then q r q 4 is gamma d f ok this charge effect. So, all put together or uh, the ultimate bearing capacity. So, the, now what is that you have introduced a tension force is introduced and uh, the ultimate bearing capacity now is given by these all the three summation of all the three terms earlier it was only q 1 now because of this just there is some increase and one can calculate the increase based on this ok. So, what they did was that uh, design pressure should be equal to the sum of the pressures due to the fill and the equipment like you know uh, what is that uh, you know you have constructed an embankment and there is a traffic load coming and then the equipment. So, the total load should be equal to q b plus q m you know due to backfill and the manufacturing thing. So, the design pressure should be less than the ultimate bearing capacity in terms of the factor of safety that is what uh, we normally expect ok. So, uh, their own uh, guidelines show that um, parameters for bearing capacity calculations it is Japanese society for soil mechanics and foundation engineering in Japan uh, you can say that d f by h is something if you see u is about say for example, 4 they just go to a depth of 0.5 or whatever you know they use a particular number. So, for example, 4 is 0 0.5 0 0.6 here in this case of 4 it can be that angle of rotation theta ok what you saw earlier it is about 30, 40 degrees and then r radius is something like here also about some range they have given you can see it is a bigger range, but they have done some method some analysis method have that. I also want to highlight to you uh, very uh, important point here that uh, they have used some of this information and got the improvement in bearing capacity and they are uh, trying to put in the form of a chart see if what well, depending on the under shear strength this is here you can see that the values are very low like 0 0.1 0 0.5 1 1 uh, kPa it is very low actually it is like uh, you know it is like less than more than liquid limit actually it is 5 kPa here 10 kPa here. So, actually beyond this say beyond you know uh, 1.5 
know about uh, beyond 3 they have used uh, geotextile here and uh, because you know it is very difficult to work in uh, two, uh, two watery deposits like uh, so they have used in fact uh, see the different earth filling methods also dumped over water A like you have all of this materials A F yeah A 4 F the here see that uh, the these are all uh, the strength is very low 0 0.5 to 1 and then under water when it, when there is a water. So, you have to dump and then put a geotextile and that uh, tensile strength requirement is about you know you can see tensile strength of the geocentrics about 80 to 100 kilo Newton per meter ok. Then suppose you have uh, this is all uh, ok A 5, A 5 is uh, dumped over water and a geograde ok, A 4 is also bamboo sheet you can see they are all here ok. Then A 2, A 2 is something that it is here, uh, A 2 is also a geonet, J A 1, A 2, A 3 they are all you know it there have this materials. What about B? B is nothing but the placed and spread over land. Okay. So there is another type. You have some material here B1, B3, B4, B3, and all that. Okay. Then even one can do pumping also. So there is another type. So what I want to say is that these are all you know practiced in Japan. I just want to highlight to you. And in fact, we have used it extensively in many of the bearing capacity problems. Many of the uh, um, uh, soft soils uh, they can have effective uh, increase in bearing capacity using this method. Okay. So, what I would like to say is that uh, use of just this is very useful in bearing capacity problems to increase the bearing capacity and reduce settlements. The technique has been uh, successfully implemented in many problematic areas and uh, the fact is that the research is continuing on material development. In fact, uh, people have been working on uh, uh, you know different types of materials they can be very stiff also like you know the thing is that uh, the soil is super soft soil like but then how do you increase its bearing capacity it is more almost like a liquid but you want to have the structure there. So, people are looking at uh, geogrid material testing development then design methodologies also like you know of course, we saw two design methodologies actually in uh, when it even when you try to add up uh, the uh, Binky and Lee method for sands. And also, just saw we have we have saw in the case of soft soils two design methods. One is by, you know, considering the three failure mechanisms like uh, shear layer effect, uh, then confining effect, and surcharge effect. And also, the Japanese practice that we saw. And uh, there is lot of scope for many more design approaches here because one can do lot of uh, modeling here using uh, appropriate considered models and uh, see if they are all all right. And they can get lot of other insight also about uh, other methods. So then there could be construction influences. We saw that uh, if you you know dewatering is an issue in some places. So there's all construction issues, and you know some places you may ha you have to dump uh, the water is there, but still you have to dump uh, the soil on that. And uh, this is there's lot of work being done on those lines, and any useful anything that can contribute to practice in this direction and in improve, uh, the improve the professional practice is going to be a boon in this area. A lot of work is being done, but still there is still a lot of scope that is what I want to say. So, thank you and now I will just take up the other one which is very important again uh, which is the slope stability improvement. This uh, slope stability improvement is something that uh, is we need for every uh, wherever you have a slope you need to if the factor of safety is less than 1 you have to improve it there is no other uh, solution here. And uh, what I would be covering in this uh, uh, slope design is that why is it uh, reinforced soil is required or why is that reinforcement helpful in this uh, slopes. Then we discuss some design methods and one of the popular methods that I will discuss 
and we will discuss what are the design parameters in that and uh, there are so many parameters there we will see that and what are the design values how should you choose design values then what are the steps in design and we will also see from an example. Uh, I, sh I told you earlier that the British code BS8006 is something very standard in the case of reinforced soils and slopes. Uh, this is one of the LD earliest uh, codes that came on this uh, in this area and because of which there is lot of advancement you know mean people have been constructing reinforced earth walls, slopes and all that. The difference between a slope and a wall is that the wall is vertical whereas the slope has some inclination varying from. 90 degrees to 35 degrees or 20 degrees angle of repose you know the thing is the slope if the slope is having an angle of repose then uh, it, it is st somewhat stable but as the slope angle is increased and it approaches vertical uh, ne verticality then the problem is that yeah it is unstable. So, in fact there are number of methods of handling this and uh, BS8006 indicates that the reinforcement of slopes is possible for a number of applications. One is reinforcement of a fill in a new construction, reinforcement of failed slopes, reinforcement of existing ground in cut slopes, reinforcement of an existing cut or a field slope which is margin stable. Actually we have done most of these applications and I uh, will show you uh, uh, some examples here like say for example reinforcement of a fill in a new construction like say you are trying to uh, go for construction and uh, if the bearing capacity of the bottom soil is not sufficient you can increase the bearing capacity or slope stability. So, if for example what exactly you are doing is that by addition of this fill the stability could be uh, you know th there is a possibility that it is uh, there is a slip circle failure like this right. This is a, so, you would like to avoid that you place reinforcement like this then construct. The other way is that some slopes can fail ok. So, one can really uh, you know this is another one you know, reinforcement of failed slope one can do like this this also they can do and uh, filling you know the thing is some of these things are quite uh, simple to do and uh, reinforcement to improve the existing structures like you know suddenly we uh, realize that the slope is not stable and one can do that ok. So, there are many applications of this. How do you do this in fact uh, and the design? Uh, we know the classical slip surface method if this is the height of the embankment we know that uh, these are driving forces. So, the resisting forces are from the slip circle length of the slip surface we know and uh, there is some surcharge and all these things are acting these are all some notations that we know standard notations. What we know is that based on the slip circle analysis like you know how do you do the slip circle analysis you may remember that you have to take uh, say this is a slope you have to divide that into a number of slices and then for each slice you should uh, see the uh, uh, see that if the conditions of horizon sigma v sigma h and sigma m are satisfied like uh, the resisting forces resisting forces are from the uh, shear resistance of the soil and the driving forces are from the weight or it can be even from an earthquake it can be even from seepage. So, all these things one should consider and then calculate the factor of safety. In fact, you have so many programs nowadays to calculate uh, slopes, uh, slope stability like it gives in, in terms of the factor of safety right. And if you do finite element analysis yes it is also again possible and uh, the, slope the slope stability can be computed even you can also relate it to deformation in uh, if you are using uh, flak say for example, flak if you are using one can calculate uh, the uh, the factor of safety and also the deformation because they use uh, uh, strength reduction technique uh, for uh, factor of safety evaluation where the c plus sigma tan, tan phi the strength parameters are successively reduced till the slope achieves a, a condition of failure ok. 
So, once you know that this stability is not there, what we do is that we put some sort of reinforcement here. So, like we uh, again you know this can it is a matter of design here like you have a some sort of reinforcement at some spacing and some length and all that and calculate again the factor of safety. What happens is that if this is a slip circle, this is a slip surface and this is a slip surface and you have a reinforcement here the 3 reinforcement layers uh, you know you try to as I just explained the principle of reinforced soil earlier that the um, um, if you just resolve this uh, tensile forces in the reinf uh, reinforcement uh, it adds to um, it reduces the destabilizing forces it increases the resisting forces that is what we saw that equation we also we know what is the extra shear resistance because of the reinforcement and its location even we have seen what is the optimum angle and all that right. So, based on that we know that if you put some sort of reinforcement of adequate length because the moment you put the reinforcement it should not come out also. So, we have to provide adequate length and uh, that is uh, what we do. So, there are many methods to understand this problem we, we call them as limit equilibrium methods and uh, what we do here is that we assume a suitable failure mechanism like you know it if we assume that it fails in the form of a circle like a beautiful slip circle. Then we also assume that it can be a logarithmic spiral it can be a wedge instead of a single wedge it can be a two part wedge. So, there are number of assumptions that one can make and calculate you know the assumption is essentially to know that like as I just mentioned the previous uh, thing that you have to make an assumption about the failure surface. Once you know the assumptions as I just mentioned and if you put some sort of reinforcement you can calculate uh, what is the tensile force required to have a factor of safety of 1.5 is it not. You can always put some sort of reinforcement elements like this and then you know you write uh, there are so many slope stability programs nowadays in internet and even uh, commercial software and you can just calculate uh, what is uh, now uh, factor of safety without reinforcement and with reinforcement what is that and how much say for example, I want a factor of safety of 1.5 and uh, what should be the length of the reinforcement and the tensile force all can be made and uh, you have lot of uh, opportunities there. So, this methods are essentially dependent on the failure mechanisms and one more thing one should be very clear that uh, the mechanisms are something that uh, are we have to assume here like then only you know it is possible to calculate ok. Now, uh, there is another one you know what we try to do so there are many people who worked on these lines like the calculation of earth pressure coefficients using limit equilibrium methods is a classical problem you know in fact if you want to calculate uh, the earth pressure kp or ka how do you evaluate it you have to assume some uh, uh, make an assumption about the failure surface whether it can be a wedge whether it can be a circle whether it can be a you can calculate once you know uh, the uh, uh, the earth pressure rest one can define and then um, calculate what should be the value corresponding to a certain, a certain angle like phi or certain uh, properties like you know we know that say for example, uh, the uh, why we why you know the earth pressure how much of earth pressure is coming and how much of earth pressure is to be uh, designed you know which is the, which should be the design uh, coefficient for the, the earth reinforcement one can find out here ok. So, there are couple of people who worked on these lines in fact, uh, we also did some work on uh, calculation of uh, um, at pressure coefficients for seismic uh, coefi different uh, for seismic conditions and all that. So, when you are trying to design the reinforced uh, soil slope uh, normally you have some parameters uh, one is what is the slope angle. So, what is the angle that you need say so, is it beta you know beta is a slope angle can it, it can be even vertical also, but you know say what is the 70 degree slope I want I can say that. So, then large strain friction angle in fact, as I just mentioned um, friction angle of the backfill this is a backfill ok. Then pore pressure coefficient is something that uh, I should introduce you to you now in the sense that we know the informed soil is there and pore pressure coefficient is nothing but u 1 by gamma z 1 u 2 by gamma z 2 like what is the ratio of pore pressure to its overburden pressure 
is something that we say u1 by gamma z1 and u2 we just say they are all constant maybe suppose you say that it is a 1 meter you know um, uh, you pore pressure raise you know how do you measure the pore pressures you have to measure using some sort of equipment. Actually the pore pressure is nothing but it is in terms of the weight of the water column heights. Suppose you say that it is 1 meter height into the unit weight of water is we know 1 divided by gamma z1 you know we know roughly it could be gamma is uh, uh, z is same you know z is same and then at the same thing it can be half okay. If the pore pressure is fully mobilized say pore pressure how do you measure it is nothing but the z1 into gamma w gamma w is a weight of water right okay. So, z1 z1 gets cancelled and it is just the ratio of unit weights of this water as well as the soil okay. So, it could be roughly about 0.5 and uh, so that is called pore pressure coefficient. Then if you are placing a reinforcement like this okay the requirement is that you need to have a bond coefficient see the thing is I said the reinforcement should not fail by tension or by bonding. So, you if it bond coefficient is what is the bond coefficient like you know you say that uh, the bonding is provided because of the uh, friction and the geo grid suppose you are using geo grids uh, that bond coefficient you should calculate okay. Uh, in fact, uh, if you remember the uh, the example of uh, the bearing capacity problem uh, we, we calculated the uh, bond coefficient there uh, we took sigma b by sigma n if you remember and we have an expression also which is in terms of the tan phi of the soil and the failure mechanism and we did that. So, bond coefficient one can get uh, based on those assumptions and calculations and direct sliding coefficient is nothing but tan delta tan I mean or tan delta which is nothing but uh, which, is, which is nothing but two thirds of tan phi okay. So, that is one thing. So, all put together there are some expressions in fact, I advise you to go to uh, library and read the book by Jewel you know it is a very good book on uh, reinforced soils please read it and I am just essentially following that book for this particular lecture. Then okay, uh, you, you know this, this are all some soil properties and all that you know how do you like uh, see uh, the moment you want to design the slope uh, you need soil properties what type of soil is there. So, design values for the shouldering distance is nothing but phi dash d is nothing but phi dash c s which value of uh, uh, phi I should take is it a peak value is it a long large strain value. So, here we are taking a critical state uh, large strain value actually and uh, experiments have shown that this phi c s is in the range of 30 to 35 degrees for uh, granular soils and low plastic less maybe 20 to 25 degrees okay. Then maximum expected unit weight is nothing but gamma d we know that right. Then suitable pore, pore, uh, pore pressure coefficient so, for example, we know that uh, the soil is going to be dry there is a good drainage. So, water may not stand okay. So, pore pressure uh, in the case of a dry slope is 0 like as I just mentioned pore pressure is what u by gamma z when u is 0 pore pressure is 0 or when there is a water head or there is some partial saturation there could be some uh, water head and you can say that uh, pore pressure coefficient is say maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.1 or 0 0.5 maximum is 0 0.5 okay. But uh, as, as just said it is a ratio of the unit weight of water to the unit weight of the backfill. So, if the unit weight of the backfill is going to be less then you have to make it uh, make appropriate corrections. Now, how do you choose the reinforcement? As I just mentioned we are using geo grids and uh, geo textiles and uh, even geo composites as I just mentioned in a Vizag uh, Kanakadurga temple they have used uh, geo composite okay. And uh, how do you select the geosynthetic material that is very important. We know that uh, the, the why do you choose reinforcement, reinforcement we know we, we need because it develops some force in the reinforcement okay there is some force that gets mobilized because of the reinforcement that friction between the soil and reinforcement. 
So, the reinforcement force should act till its design life is complete. Say for example, if the design life is T d right. So, that design force should be you know what I in this figure what it shows is that you have some allowable force and you have what is you get from the manufacturing side. Say for example, a particular material you can choose and uh, you can uh, get that what is allowable you can calculate from uh, calculations the way. So, the what is in this material should be always more than what is actually uh, required or what is allowable you know there is some minimum value here. So, actually uh, F d is nothing they are all damage, uh, damage factors F is environmental factor and uh, we always see that this materials are always here such that the allowable uh, reinforcement force is there all the time. Say for example, if you are trying to construct a slope the force the slope should be stable for 50 years. So, when it is 50 years you may have a reinforcement force like this which is in the beginning that it may come down with time it is about say for example, 50 years. Okay. So, that force should be more than what is required here that is very important and uh, as I just mentioned these are all manufactured materials in the some uh, standard conditions they will have some damage they have some environmental factors and all that you have to make all those corrections and see that this is all right. So, that is what I want to say and uh, the allowable force P allowable in the reinforcement must be selected to allow for conditions in the ground at the end of the design life and the design temperature. Actually many of the geosynthetic materials are plastic you know as I said they are all uh, poly, polyethylene uh, polymers polymers essentially and uh, they have uh, you know they respond to temperatures and biological conditions also sometimes. So, one should be very careful and uh, so we have some partial factors of safety here mechanical damage 1.1 maximum is 1.6 environmental factors 1.1 and uh, if you have a uh, not much data it is 1.3 and if you are trying to extrapolate to one log sky cycle it is this thing. See you have reference properties and this is one log cycle say for example, this is log 1, this is log 10, this is log 100. So, this is one log cycle this is second one is sec uh, second log cycle. So, if you have that the correction factors are 1.5 2.2. So, you apply all these correction factors to that and also a overall factor again one more you can if you depending on the importance of the structure one can make you know these are all material partial factors and the overall factor of safety is also given and this is based on the company's literature ok. Now, uh, once we know that uh, the uh, we know about backfill soil we know about uh, the reinforcement to some, to some extent uh, I want uh, I just gave some information about this what is the difference between bond and sliding. So, as I just mentioned uh, sigma n is the normal stress, tau is the shear stress. So, tau by normal stress is nothing but F b into tan phi d. Okay. So, F b is nothing but the bond coefficient okay. and in the case of joke grid you can imagine that it is not easy to work, it is not easy to pull out because of the grids and all that and there is some operation. So, all that. So, this one thing that is bond resistance is going to be higher and it is a function of normal stress and you also have what is called direct sliding you can see that the you know nice slip circle is formed and then it is getting uh, slid on the previous thing right. So, you are able to understand what is uh, these two. Okay. So, the direct sliding coefficient is nothing but it is a measure of the say, shear resistance of the soil and uh, it is not normally given in terms of the FDS stand for preferential sliding across the surface of the reinforcement layer. The bond coefficient is the due to bond through shear 
on the plane reinforcement surface as well as bearing and depends on the proportion of the grid and the shearing, uh, shear resistance of the soil. Like as I just mentioned, now if you have a geo grid, uh, when the shear uh, uh, takes place, there is a contact between the soil to soil and also soil to geo grid and also bearing resistance. There are a couple of things there because of which uh, the bond coefficient will be higher. So, what how do you do this design if you have a reinforcement? We see that if I remember if you do you remember that uh, uh, there is some lateral force coming up and uh, if you put a reinforcement uh, that uh, we have a maximum see we have to have what is called the basis of design is the calculation of distribution of maximum required stress to be supplied by the reinforcement for equilibrium. In fact, if you introduce the reinforcement, it will introduce some uh, stress into in inward stress. You know, the thing is that it is it is like this. You know, there is an outward stress, but then if you put a reinforcement, there is an inward uh, shear stress, and uh, so that is because of the tension between the soil and reinforcement. And uh, so the calculation of the maximum required stress to be supplied by reinforcement for equilibrium means the material should be stable, the slope should be stable, and uh, that depends on the required stress or the maximum stress. So, a, a suitable provision of reinforcement can then be made with sufficient strength and spacing so that minimum available stress from the reinforcement exceeds the maximum required stress. What is that we are looking at? Actually whatever is that uh, there is some stress that is coming and if the stress supplied by the reinforcement is much higher than the stress that is required then we are safe at all levels like say for example, we know that K naught into gamma H will be the um, earth pressure into S V into S H. So, for example, is S V is the vertical spacing and S H is the horizontal spacing. So, gamma K, K, K naught into S V into S H will be the uh, horizontal force and if you put a reinforcement that, that is nothing but the uh, force mobilized in the reinforcement. So, we try to see that uh, the reinforcement has sufficient length and spacing and it is always safe such that the uh, a suitable provision of reinforcement can be made with sufficient strength and spacing to see that available minimum stress you know whatever is that you have provided from the reinforcement is always more than the maximum required stress for equilibrium in soils at every depth that is what is the principle here. And uh, to do that in fact uh, how do you calculate the maximum required force? One see the thing is if the wall is vertical, how do you calculate the maximum vertical force? It is Ka into gamma h square by 2, right? Is it not? Then if the, there is some inclination, we say that uh, we also allow as uh, the what, uh, wall slightly comes down, then there is a reduction in the earth pressure. We say that Ka will come down, right? So earth pressure and then when they finally it approaches the angle of repose, that pressure is zero. So that is what we are trying to do here like you know air pressures are calculated in fact this is a chart design chart given by Jewel and uh, you can see that for different friction angles phi d is here and k required is this and slope angles. So, for example, slope angle is 90 and if the friction angle is 20 degrees the k required is higher you know right like say 1 minus sin phi in the case of a vertical wall how much is that say for example, if you take friction angle as 30 right 1 minus sin phi one can calculate you will get some 0.33 right. So, this is the standard one and the advantage of this plot is that it gives you the what is the required force. So, this is to be supplied by the reinforcement ok. So, uh, this is one thing and uh, actually once you get the required reinforcement force from say for example, what you are going to do is here in this uh, chart is that uh, if I know the sand material that you are using for the backfill say for example, 30 degrees and if the slope angle is say uh, 70 degrees it will be the 0.2 will be the required earth pressure coefficient ok. So, 30 degrees is here and then 70 degrees is here. So, it is about point, point 0.2 ok this you should remember and this type of charts are prepared for pore pressure equal to 0.25 and 0.5 and all that that is a simple matter that he prepared. Once we know 
uh, that this much of uh, force is required from uh, the reinforcement to keep the stable slope uh, I mean slope stable uh, whatever is the angle then the length is also important because there are two things that we have here one is the length length required for stability you know minimum length of the minimum length see there is some you place reinforcement in the slope uh, at the at pressure at the top is less at the bottom it is higher and the minimum length at the top is the crust is that required for overall, st overall stability actually there is another we have a different consideration this is from tension consideration and uh, the other one is overall stability considerations and sliding considerations see in any anything like see the moment you construct something you should not lead to failure like it should not lead to failure by uh, first thing is a fo the reinforcement force should have adequate internal resistance should give that and also it should not fail by overall uh, considerations and also it should have sliding also we will see that. So, the minimum length at the crest of the slope is that required for overall stability the minimum length at the base of the slope is the greater of the required for overall stability and to prevent direct sliding. In fact, we calculate uh, uh, the length of reinforcements at the bottom by sliding considerations and also overall stability considerations and uh, uh, whichever is higher you take actually okay, greater of the required will take it and uh, when the where the length the say for example, if the length of the reinforcement as I said uh, if, if you remember that uh, the at the top the air pressure is less and but then the pull out resistance you know but uh, you cannot provide a short length because the overburden is less and pull out resistance has to be more. So, your length is little more. So, length is little longer whereas, at the bottom the air pressure is somewhat higher and uh, the though the overburden is higher that consideration the length could be a, a, you know a little uh, uh, you know uh, they, they you the tension force governs the design here well as pull, pull out resistance governs the length of the reinforcement at the top. So, uh, what we do is as a wire media we try in for some small heights the length the reinforcement will be of constant length like if 7, 7 meters or 10 meters is the height of the ball we say 0 0.7 times is the length of the reinforcement ok. Then where the reinforcement of constant is reused, select the greatest strength required to satisfy the uh, at the base of the slope ok. We normally provide I will show you that and when direct sliding governs the required reinforcement length at the base of the slope it is permissible to reduce the length uniformly from LDS at the base of the slope to L overall at the crest of the slope. Uh, this is a diagram that uh, we will see we will discuss this much more after the break. In fact, uh, uh, the you know the length of the reinforcement is you know for different angles and all that one can get what should be the length and there is a minimum uh, length required from sliding considerations also. So, uh, for any slope one can get this ok I will stop at this stage.